What's up guys? I am back to bring you your recap on Love and Hip Hop season 8 episode 13 and it is titled Saint Martin Part 1. Switch up, switch up. <laughs> First, let's begin with the fight from last week that carried over into this week with Remy, Yandy, and the birds, my God, the girls that they were trying to get to come to a resolve, Bianca, Bree, Mariah, and Dream Doll, my God. And I gagged because I thought that the fight was only gonna be with Bree and Bianca and did not realize that in this episode, Mariah and Dream were gonna turn up, my God. But Mariah was wrong for saying that she would sit on Safari's face in retaliation to Dream Doll. But the thing that stood out to me in this whole messiness and this whole craziness for no damn reason is that this meetup was for charity to get the girls to go to St. Martin to help out with the efforts of the people and victims of the hurricane, my God. So when Yandy mentioned it to Dream Doll as to why the meetup happened, I was thrown off when she said she's all for doing charity, but she can't be around girls who can't control themselves. And my thing is, every time we've seen Dream Doll in a scene, my God, even with Safari, it has been her not being able to control herself. So it's clearly the pot calling the kettle black, my God. But also on the other end, when Remy went to go talk to Mariah Lynn, I just feel like it's sad because as talented as Mariah Lynn is, she keeps missing the big picture and big point because even Remy said, you can't tell me what I saw. I saw you guys on your side pretty much turn up. It wasn't just about the words and the comments going back and forth, but Bianca's ass and then even Mariah Lynn being team Bianca. And I'm all for loyalty, my God. But you also, just like DJ Self said, being loyal is telling your friend when they are wrong and telling them to chill and calm down, especially when it pertains to making your money and securing the bag, my God. Next, let's address that while we all thought that Remy was going to St. Martin to team up and help Yandy and they were doing it as a somewhat of a partnership, Papoo said, hell no, she can't go because her IVF is beginning and I'm not sure if that's a valid excuse. I don't know much about IVF. I do know it can be draining and stressful on the body, but I'm not sure as to why Remy could not have prepared to have gone to do this charity work and then start her IVF right after because when they were saying a couple of weeks or a few weeks, I said, they're playing this up for a storyline, my God, because they weren't being specific on when the time frame of the IVF was beginning in comparison to when Yandy, Remy, and the girls were going to go to St. Martin, my God. But next, I want to address and mention that Anais said she is back home with her children, but she is not sure about divorce as of yet. And that bothers me because it comes across like... Anais is only using Ruben, her husband, as a security blanket because you were 100% clear about divorce when you thought that Rich was going to have your back and now that he does not, my God, you're back home and considering, I guess, staying with Ruben. So I just feel like Ruben is being played, but I still go back to my original thought was when this season began is that Ruben probably already agreed to Anais getting a divorce and or they're not gonna get a divorce but they're gonna play this up as a storyline because it just does not make sense for this to play out on camera and on TV and then she's back home and things are all fine, well, and good to a certain extent or to a certain degree, my God. Navarro is finally back. He had been MIA for a few episodes and I guess it was important to show him getting Fetty Wap out of jail for drag racing and yeah, I mean, other than that, we also saw him meet up with Ashley and he claims that Ashley put him out of the house after that whole issue and debacle. But now Ashley is claiming that it was the wrong move and she reacted out of emotion in her being pregnant. But I'm not buying that, my God. I feel like this is a part of their storyline as well. Navarro was home all the damn long, my God. Next, let's address Safari's fur coat album release party where he had all guests were fur coats, and that was when he was also invited to go to St. Martin as well, my God. And I believe that it was Juju who invited Safari, if I'm not mistaken. And actually, Yandy was there as well. So Safari is going in replace of Remy Ma, but we did get to see Cayenne and Jacque again. And I'm still not buying 
Cayenne's excuse for her attacking Sophia. I know people commented in the comment section claiming that Cayenne went on her live and was saying that the editors and producers played that scene wrong. That was not what happened last week. But even her reasoning this week on the episode is still so stupid. Her claiming that she went after Sophia for her calling her boo or babe or being dismissive. And I'm like, well, I get how that can be disrespectful. You were very extreme with trying to attack her, but you were also clapping back and calling her Sophia the Thotty, my God. So I just, I'm just not buying Cayenne's story and I'm still not liking her at this moment. And she's just looking really stupid to me at this point. Now, last but not least, let's address the St. Martin situation when everybody is there and present, my God. So we had Yandy, Bree, Anais, and Jonathan all in the same villa. And Anais is 100% crazy, my God, because I was a tad bit annoyed that everybody knew that they were coming to this place, this island, to support and help the people and the victims there, my God. So for Anais's focus to only be drinking and luxuriating and, and being on vacation, it's just like, girl, why did you come? And I was just dying laughing when Anais said that she lets her friends know about her penis. And when Yandy said, bitch, you got a penis? And Anais said, are you calling me a man? I was like, ooh, bitch, because people have been trying to call Anais a man, my God, and wondering if she is or she isn't. But Anais just goes to the extreme because it was your fault, Anais, for saying that you have penises. Although I knew what she meant, and I think Yandy did as well, but it was the right moment to kind of bring up, girl, oh, so you're a man, because she was already being extra. So I feel like it was a way for Yanti to try to bring her down, you know, a couple notches, my God. And I'm about fed up with Anais always claiming that Jonathan is not a good friend, my God, because I feel like Anais puts Jonathan in these horrible situations and she's not being a friend because you came here to work, not luxuriate, not be sitting by the pool, not having a cocktail, and you are the odd man or woman out, my God. So it's so unfair for Anais to always label Jonathan as being the bad friend when thus far he has been seen like the great friend in the situation with her. Especially for her to say he's a bad friend or not there for her when Jonathan was the one who was there when that whole situation went down between Rich and Ruben and Anais needing some shelter and some support, my God. Also that scene where Anais confronted Yandy and told her to stay away from Jonathan, I just feel like this is so petty and elementary we all can have multiple friends and Jonathan seems to handle his friendships well because in this episode, Anais did say that Jonathan is always up Yandy's ass, but I don't see it that way, my God. So Anais just needs to chill because she is really doing the most these days, my God. Now, in the other villa, we had Juju, Safari, Jacque, and Mariah Lynn, which I feel like was a great pair, but we also found out that Jacque was going to have Cayenne show up, and Mariah Lynn was definitely concerned because Cayenne and Brie have a beef, but I'm like, all these damn girls have a beef, my God. If you are on here to get money, drop the beefs and focus on the bag, but it will be interesting to see if Cayenne and Brie are able to come to a resolve, especially being in a place where they're trying to help others and do charity work, by God. And we also found out in this episode, and it was great to hear that Safari wanted to do a remix to his song and add some of the ladies on there and make it a charity effort to donate proceeds to St. Martin as well. I thought that was so great. And I feel like it could be a hot record with the right people on there because the original record is kind of hot to me. If it was the record that he was playing and singing and rapping at his, at his fur coat launch party, my God. Also, before I close, I do want to mention Bianca and Hennessy showing up on the scene. If you guys don't remember, Hennessy is the sister to Cardi B, but Bianca felt so salty because she was the only one left in NYC, while pretty much everyone else, except for Dream Doll, was invited to go to St. Martin, my God. And I'm just confused as to how Bianca is so salty when she is the one who started the fight. She was the one to run up and try to throw the first hit, my God. So for Bianca to say, why were the others invited when all of them were in the fight? No, bitch, you started it, Bianca. You started the fight. I also gagged when Hennessy got out of the car dressed for the summertime, but it was winter and snowing in New York, my God. 
and we found out that Hennessy went to fashion school, but clearly the fashion school did her no justice because when she was in the store trying to help Bianca or be her fashion stylist, my God, there was a collar necklace in the display case. And when Hennessy said, oh, you should try this thing, this thing is cute, fashionistas and people who have been educated in fashion would not call a necklace or a collar necklace a thing, like, or it. That shows your lack of intelligence and education on a particular subject or your career and field. So that was not the best light to show Hennessy's fashionista skills, my God, because calling it a thing and not knowing the proper terms is what puts you on a level of being professional, skilled, and worth the money for paying you, my God. So at this point, I feel like Hennessy will only be put on because she is the sister to Cardi B, my God. Oh, and I do want to address the fact that Bianca said that she is mad at Mariah now for going to St. Martin like dummy. You clearly do not know that it was for charity because how are you mad at Mariah for going to do some charity efforts and do some charity work? Because your ass would have been there too. So to think that Mariah went and is just on vacation, like y'all, I'm over this Love & Hip Hop New York. Like I'm actually more intrigued by Love & Hip Hop Miami than I am Love & Hip Hop New York because I feel like this is so, while I know all of it is fabricated and, and, it's, and it's fake storylines or exaggerated storylines, Love & Hip Hop New York is really falling off because I feel like we're watching it just to watch it because even the scene with Anais approaching Yandy seems so fake and even Anais playing it up and not being a part of helping seems so fake as well because she clearly cannot be that dumb to go to St. Martin and not want to focus on helping the less fortunate people who have been affected by the hurricane. But that's about it, guys. Please comment in the comment section. Let me know what you thought about this episode and what you caught that I did not catch. Please follow me on all social media outlets. Thumbs up this video. Subscribe to my channel. Turn on the notifications and thank you guys for watching. Bye.